Welcome to the answer session for Tools and Co. In the last video, I gave you some information around calculating break-evens for a multi-product business. And we're going to use that data now to help us do this exercise called Tools and Co. So let me bring into screen here the Word document that contains the Tools and Co questions. And we're given some information here. In this business for the year, we told that the sales is one and a half million. And we have a series of variable expenses here that sum up to the top. And sales minus variable costs gets you to a gross profit. And we're given a series of fixed costs. And there's the total of the fixed cost, 309,000. And if you take your gross profit less your fixed expenses, you get the net profit of 30,000. We're also given some information here that tells us, of course, sales as a percentage of sales, that must be 100%. And here's the variable expenses as a percentage of sales, 77,4%. And of course, the gross profit percentage as well at 22,6%. And then they ask us, what would be the effect on the 2013 net profit of Tools & Co if the sales increased by 20%, take 1.5 million, grow it by 20%, and the ratio of variable expenses to sales and the amount of fixed expenses remained unchanged. Effectively, what they're asking us to do is to do a forecast for the 2013 year. So if you imagine we did this next to this one, it would be the year ahead. And we want to see what's the impact on the profitability given the scenario that's laid out in question one. So let's have a go at that. Let's bring in our Excel spreadsheet. And what you'll notice here on the left hand side is the data that was given in the question. And here is the percentage of sales data that was given. So the first thing we asked to do is to take the one and a half million and grow it by 20%. And here you can see I multiplied it by 1.2 and that gets us to 1.8 million. And the question said, what would be the effect on the 2013 net profit? So we're looking to see what's going to happen down here, but we need to work our way there. And they specifically tell us that the ratio of variable expenses, in other words, that 77,4% remains unchanged. So the wording in the question is important because the ratio stays the same. But if you do more sales, you would expect that you would have to manufacture more goods in order to make those sales. So we calculate here what is 77,4% of the sales. Now, if you wanted to, you could have done those all individually, but that's not necessary. Really, we're just going to calculate the variable expenses. 77,4% of sales. Sales minus variable expenses gets us to our gross profit margin of 406,800. And they said to us that the fixed expenses remain unchanged. So there we have all the fixed expenses at 309,000, the same as last year. And now our profit is going to be 97,800 and there we have completed an income statement for the, for the year and you can see that the profit has gone up. So that's the answer to question one. The next question says to us, what would be the effect on the 2013 net profit if the existing manager were to retire and was replaced by a new manager at a salary of 60,000? So here you can see how the existing manager at 80,000 has come out and the new manager at 60,000 has come in. All right, and it specifically says the 2013 here. So the data that I calculated in question one, I'm just gonna carry that over and use it as part of question two. So nothing in the top part of the income statement changes. The only part that changes is 80 becomes 60. In other words, we've reduced our fixed cost by 20,000 Rand. Therefore, our profit has gone up by 20,000 Rand. That is as simple as it is. 
So the thing is to look at the question and be clear as to what they're asking, because once you know what they're asking, the simplicity appears. So they did t tell us that this manager or this information of 60 becoming 80 only applies to question two. So in question three, we're going to go back to the original data. And the question here that they're asking us is a little bit of a trick question. Let's see what they're saying here. What could sales decline to before operations resulted in a net loss? So let's think about what that is asking. What can sales decline to before operations resulted in a net loss? So the point before you make a loss is where your profit is zero. And if you remember your break-even rules, profit of zero, that is a break-even type of question. So that's what's asking. That's what's being asked here. Assuming the ratio of variable expenses and the amount of fixed cost remain unchanged, they're just saying use the existing data. So let's see here for question three what's happening. There's the profit of zero just before we make a loss. Here's our fixed expenses and we know at break even the gross profit is equal to the fixed expenses. Now we can use rule number five, 309,000 divided by 22,6% gets you the sales. And now we can determine that sales can decline to 1.3 million and some change before we make a loss. Once you've got that sales number, you can calculate the variable expenses by saying sales multiplied by 77,4%. And then you would have completed your grid and question three would be answered. All right. So in question four, here they're specifically asking us what sales would be required to produce a profit of 100,000. So let's plug the 100,000 in. It's part of the given information. We know what the fixed costs are. We add on our way up. So that 309 plus the 100 becomes 409,000. 409,000 divided by 22,6 gets you to sales number. So now we see that the sales required is a little bit higher than 1.8 million in order to generate 100,000 in profit. So let's for a moment move those two questions out the way and just compare question one and question four and hopefully in the numbers you can see the alignment and recognize very quickly that our numbers must be correct. So if you start here at the bottom, notice how the profit in question one is just a little bit less than the profit target that we achieved in question four. So if this is a little bit less in profit, we would expect that the sales all the way at the top would just be a little bit less. And there you can see the 1.8 million versus this number slightly higher than 1.8 million. So immediately you can look at the numbers and say, okay, that looks aligned, that looks correct, it makes sense. Let's go on to question five, the last question. It was very clearly a break-even question. It said, what would the break-even be expressed in sales if the gross profit percentage was reduced to 20%? So there it is. There's my 20%. It's come down from the previous gross profit margin. Well, follow the rules. Make this zero. Fixed expenses haven't changed. Make these two equal to each other. GP divided by margin gets you to a sales number that represents the break even. And we are done. We have completed Tools and Co. And we've done some income statement gymnastics on a multi product business. So now we are ready to have a go at a substantially more difficult case study. And what that's going to be is that's going to be uh, Mike's Kitchen or Mike's Restaurant. And I'm going to ask you to look out for that case in the downloads. There's a series of videos that go with it to help you with the answers. And if you can apply your learning to the Mike's Restaurant case, you are doing very well in your break-even learning.